As realtors, we want to provide the best level of service to our clients, but sometimes saying yes can actually be detrimental to that level of service that you're trying to provide. Learning how to say no is an essential skill to learn to protect you as well as your business. Today, we're going to talk about exactly that. And I'm going to provide a link below to the amazing blog from Starter Story with 31 Gmail templates of you to respond no to people requesting things. What's up, guys? Louis here. What is the problem with us <laughs> as realtors? Why can we not say no? We are people pleasers. We want to make sure that we are always on top of everything. You know, we always are looking for new business. We always want to be the person available. And, you know, it's one of these things which I think we need to have a real conversation about because so many realtors right now are struggling from burnout and it's a real problem. Learning to say no has been a huge part of my business in the last couple of years. I was never good at this. I was really, really bad. But, um, you know, going through my process of figuring out how to manage my time properly, how to be more productive, I knew that it was something that I had to be doing. And so when I started doing it, it felt very, very uncomfortable to tell people no or just to set boundaries in general. And you guys know if you watch the channel, I set boundaries up front with my clients. I tell them when I'm available, when I'm not. After 6 p.m., I'm not available. On the, uh, Sundays, I'm not available. And you know, I have processes in place to make sure they're still taken care of at those times, but it's not gonna be personally by me. Setting boundaries is definitely the first step to doing this. Whenever you take on clients, or even if you're working with clients right now, sit down with them and be like, hey, listen, can't wait to help you. This is gonna be awesome. Uh, but here are a couple of things you should know about me. Maybe it's location, right? Maybe it's like, hey, listen, I service uh, Metro Denver. You know, every neighborhood here, I service it. If you want to go further into the mountains and go west, then that's great. And I can certainly help with that. And I'll set up a showing assistant or another agent to show you up there. And this is one of those things where as an agent, you may have to, you know, take a bit of a hit on that. So if you have agents searching within one place, but you know they want to also search over here, which is further away from you, like over an hour drive, you know, let's let's find an agent. Let's find someone there who will take showings there. And maybe you do some kind of commission deal with them, a referral deal, or, or, or just pay them for showings, whatever that looks like. Figure that out and make it happen because driving over an hour to show clients is not worth your time. So maybe for you, it's a geographical thing, right? Like, okay, sit down with them and say, I, serv I service these areas, but if you go outside these areas, I don't go there personally, but I have an agent there who can show you the properties. So, you know, maybe that's someone on your team, maybe that's another agent you have a relationship with that you can outsource, maybe you pay them a referral fee or showing fees or whatever that looks like. Yes, you might need to take a little bit of a financial hit, but trust me, it's well worth your time. I don't drive anywhere over like 45 minutes to an hour um, just because it's not, worth it for me um, driving that far out is just crazy so I would way rather pay someone local to show those properties and be able to get back to my work and do my work and, and generate more business for myself so setting boundaries like that is great but you have to do it up front you can't just switch it halfway through a deal is really hard to do unless you have a really clear communication and relationship with the client already so saying no and setting boundaries is a big deal either geographically or time or priority you have to let them know who you are what you stand for what your core values are and what you won't do the other biggest one um, that I find a lot of times is that you know clients ask us tons of questions about everything and if it's real estate related awesome we can talk to them about that all day but a lot of times it's finance related a lot of the times it's you know um, it's you know outside of, of our expertise maybe it's like a legal situation you know with a divorce or something like that and this is the point where we have to draw our line in the sand and say, hey, this isn't in my professional expertise. Let me refer you to this person here. I know a ton of agents who try to answer all these questions because they want to be perceived as an expert in like everything. And it's one of those things where you have to say no to yourself right now, uh, where, you know, where your expertise stops and someone else's starts. So, uh, you know, I've, I've only ever done one divorce listing in my life and I'll never do one again, ever. It was absolutely brutal. Um, and it was that kind of situation, both of them calling me like, what should I do here, what should I do there? He's been a dick, well, she's a bitch. And you know, and it was, it was so bad. Um, but I got sucked into it. At that point in my career, I wasn't ready to, you know, set boundaries, push back and pass them on to someone else. So it, it was like, it was 
horrible. It was like a huge like emotional weight on my shoulders of dealing with these two people who were going through a divorce. I was selling their house. I was trying to find them both houses. It was, it was tough. So I wish I had known back then to set boundaries and say, hey, listen, guys, boom, this is what I do. Here's the line. If you need you know, help in uh, a legal matter, that's for your lawyer, that's for someone else. If you need to talk you know, about what you're going through emotionally, I can't do that because I'm representing, you know, both of you in this transaction. So you need to find some, someone else to reach out to. And really it would have set them both up for success because, you know, I was being drug into this like crazy situation and now I'm a part of it instead of just being an asset to help them get to the next step. And the last one here I want to really cover is say no to your peers. This is a huge one, guys. Um, you know, we always get asked for going to meetings. You know, we always get asked to host open houses, uh, we always get asked to go to lunch with lenders, lunch with title reps, all that stuff. This is where you really need to figure out what you're saying no to. Now, if open houses is part of your business plan and you're like, hey, you know, part of my Q1 business plan is to crush open houses, then absolutely. But if it's not, then say no, you know, and a lot of new agents, especially if you're brand new, don't feel pressured by people in your office or whoever, if you think they're a big ticket, agent and they've been doing it for years and they're like well this is what you have to do i've got an open house make sure you're there at 11 o'clock like i've heard of agents doing that and i'm like dude no thanks you know that's absolutely crazy so protecting your time is a huge 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 part of being successful in this business you have to learn to say no to the things that are not going to serve your goals and to say yes to the things that are now we've got plenty of videos that i'm going to link up here all about this subject and if you don't know your goals, this is very hard to do, but only do the things that are going to get you closer to your goals and don't do the things that are not. Even if you think, well, maybe they could in some kind of weird way help me to this goal. No, that's not a clear path. So cut it out. So saying no to your peers as well is a huge thing. So guys, there is a link below, like I said, it's going to take you to a ton of Gmail templates, 31 Gmail templates. This is absolute genius and i'm so glad that i found this website um and even if you don't like use the templates for you actually put into gmail just read through them read the language that they use to say no to different things it's very very professional is it's done very very well and it's it's it always gives context it's like hey i'm saying no and here's why you know it's never like i'm so sorry um like you know it's it's a no uh, you know i'll tell you about it whenever like i just can't it's always got a clear context, which actually helps you be more bold in saying no, because you don't have to be around the bush. You can just say, hey, no, thanks so much for asking me to host that open house. Uh, actually, I'm super focused on door knocking and cold calling at the minute, and open houses are not in my business plan. But if they do come into my business plan at a later date, I will reach out and let you know. Thanks so much again, good luck. It's that kind of thing, right? but it's just giving you that easy, easy language to apply when you're saying no to things. So check it out, guys. Uh, click the link below. It's an awesome article. Uh, I really got a lot from it and I took some of the, the templates down and I'm going to use them for myself as well. So that's it for me today, guys. Learn to say no.